Good morning, I'm Mikey Oreta and welcome to Industry Beacon where we shine a light on the trailblazers, the disruptors and the industry leaders shaping our future. And in each episode, we'll explore how they're staying ahead in their respective fields, one industry at a time. Now this morning, We'll take a look at the deepening trade ties between the Philippines and Australia, especially as the two nations roll out a five-year development partnership plan focusing on three objectives, enhancing the conditions for stability, bolstering inclusive and sustainable growth, and increasing institutional and community resilience to social, economic, and climate-related shocks. To tell us more about this, we're now joined by Australian Ambassador to the Philippines, HKU. Good morning, Ambassador HK, and uh, welcome to Industry Beacon. Good morning, Mikey. Thank you so much for having me here. Okay, Ambassador HK, the bilateral relationship between the Philippines and Australia is at its highest level in history. What are the milestones that, that, that merit this? Well, uh, I'm really excited to say that last year in September, Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese came for a bilateral visit, which was first time in 20 years. We've had prime ministers come for major multilateral fora, but that was first time in 20 years that he came on a bilateral visit to see President Marcos. During that time, we elevated our relationship to strategic partnership. And also to follow up on that, this year in February and March, President Marcos did two trips back to Australia, one as our guest of government to address our joint parliament, which was historic. And I must say, Mikey, I was actually in the audience and it gave me goosebumps listening to his speech. Then shortly after that, he, he actually went to Melbourne again to attend the ASEAN Australia Summit. And that has been followed up by very high level uh, ministers' visits to the Philippines throughout the year. I think that actually just shows how deep our relationship is and how important we are to each other as strategic partners. Yeah, the re relationship is just going from strength mm. to strength. Mm. Now, interestingly, in uh, October 17th this year, mm -hmm. you launched the Australia-Philippines Development Partnership Plan for 2024 through to 2029. This speaks volumes of, mm. of uh, how the nations uh, depend on each other. Mm. Can you tell us more about this uh, development partnership plan? Absolutely. I am so excited about the launch of our partnership, development partnership plan. Uh, as you said, this is actually a partnership plan that we developed with the Philippines, uh, bearing in mind Philippines' priority areas, so that Australia's development programs can indeed address the areas that you want to work on and actually put our heads together to come up with solutions. So I'm really, really proud of this launch because it's yet another milestone in our very important relationship. And in fact, to launch this, we had our Foreign Secretary of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade who, who came to Manila to, to uh, launch this very important plan with NEDA as a partner agency. Mm -hmm. uh, and what this development plan does is really um, indicate to the Philippines that Australia is a long-standing partner who is in it for the long haul. Uh, as you said, it actually sets out a framework for five years, 24 to 29. And in that plan, we highlight three objectives that we want to help the Philippines achieve, and that's stability and economic growth and resilience of mm -hmm. the country. And okay. we want to develop programs with our partners in the Philippines to ensure we can achieve those three objectives. Okay, realistically, what can we achieve within those five years through this partnership? Oh, I'd say actually a lot because you know, this is not the first time um, we are actually being involved in development programs. In fact, we've been uh, engaging with the Philippines in development programs for over 50 years. And during that time, what we've seen is a lot of our programs have resulted in practical, tangible outcomes. And so um, in line with that, we believe this development program, uh, development partnership plan will deliver for both our countries. Mm -hmm. um, just to give you a sense of what those things can be, for example, under the objective of stability, we have already launched programs around justice and we are working closely with Supreme Court and other partners to deliver 
justice to vulnerable people. And they are actually achieving results. Uh, of course, the justice um, system is being reformed by the wonderful Chief Justice, uh, Hasmando and his leadership. And it's been really, really impressive how much great reforms the Supreme Court, led by Chief Justice, has already achieved with our assistance. Mm -hmm. Speaking of your assistance, Ambassador HK, mm. Australia has been sending over 4 billion pesos annually to help the Philippines build capacity. Where, uh, where in the past have these these investments gone and moving forward where will they be channeled to? Mm, very good question Mikey. Yes, so on average around 4 billion pesos per year and that's just on bilateral program in some of our regional programs. That doesn't even in include what Australian government contributes to multilateral organizations like the World Bank and ADB where obviously the Philippines is one of the recipients of those programs. Uh, with those uh, 4 billion pesos per year. In the past, we have actually really focused on the education part of your uh, system, as well as social protection. And of course, uh, we've been in with the Philippines to achieve stability and economic growth in Mindanao as well. So that's been a big component of our development program as well. Um, and going forward, uh, and of course, disaster resilience and response. And going forward, we expect that we will be present in all those areas, but also a real step up, for example, in education sector, uh, a real step up in vocational education, real step up in helping year 11 and 12 students to ensure they come out of high school job ready. So we're really working on designing programs that will help us achieve that. Other areas where we're expecting greater focus is in area of climate change. Uh, I'm sure you will agree, uh, Mikey, this is something that the Filipinos feel every day because of climate change, the impact with natural disasters, the flooding and you know, uh, cyclones that we see. So Australia wants to really step up uh, in terms of coming up with good climate change programs in addition to what we've been doing with disaster res resilience and response. I mean, for example, even with cyc Cyclone Christina, that's, uh, that's Christine, uh, uh, that's, um, that's really uh, affected the Philippines in a big way. Australian government has been deploying uh, ready-made family kits and uh, kits for teenage girls and women during these really difficult times. So we will continue to do that, but we also want to step up further in climate change. And in addition, Australia believes that when it comes to development programs, um, everything we do should also have gender lens and inclusion lens. So while doing all this great work in economic growth space, disaster resilience space and stability space, we want to ensure that they're all done in a way that promotes gender equality and promotes Indigenous people's rights and disabled people's rights That's as well. uh, really a lot of work to be done on Absolutely. several fronts. Yes, um, there is. I'm the, a very busy girl. <laughs> you, you really seem to be. Okay, um, on the trade, on the topic of trade between mm. the two nations, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot that we trade with Australia. Mm. Um, but in terms of the focus areas, mm. I know there are five. There's food and agriculture, there's education, there's green energy, there's resources, and there's digital economy. Yes. Um, these are the areas with the potential for further expansion. Mm. Um, how is this so? What mm. are, how are we going to focus on these? How can we mm. expand on these specific areas oh. for growth? Another great question, Mikey. Look, um, Australian government is really focused on furthering our trade and investment with Southeast Asia, including the Philippines. And there are a number of reasons for that. The first reason, obvious reason, is that this is a growing region. This is the future economic growth engine of the world economy. And it is within our region. So of course we are going to focus on Southeast Asia. The second reason is because, you know, economic power equals strategic power. And we believe that especially the Philippines, uh, who is is, uh, who shares our values, who sh you know, shares our objectives for the region, that we want to ensure we actually give the Philippines the viable option of trading and investing more with Australia.
So to achieve that, Australian government, I'm really excited about this. This is something that I'm really passionate about. Last year, I launched a strategy to do exactly that. It's called Invested, Australia's Southeast Asia Economic Strategy to 2040. And in that strategy for the Philippines, we identify those five sectors, as you mentioned. Okay. And we've done that because we know they're the areas that the Philippines is focused on. Okay, right? I'll have to ask you to hold that thought. We have to take a quick commercial break, sure. but we'll continue this discussion when Industry Beacon returns. Wonderful. Welcome back. You're still watching Industry Beacon. Australia and the Philippines agree to boost cooperation to counter China's increasingly aggressive actions in the West Philippine Sea. The defense chiefs on the two countries met in Canberra, announcing plans to update a 1995 cooperation deal to boost their strategic alignment. Australia also plans to send an engineering team to support Manila's growing defense infrastructure. We want to lay the foundation of principled cooperation between the two of our countries. Given the fact that we live in the same part of the world, we have an interest in uh, ensuring peace and stability here. And the only framework we can operate on is on the basis of the UN Charter and international law. And to resist any unilateral attempts of redefining it to the selfish interest of any one state. We also uh, agreed to share uh, further uh, intelligence information on counterterrorism and on other uh, mutually, uh, on, on uh, security threats that we feel uh, affect our countries, uh, both our countries. Now let's continue our discussion with Australian Ambassador to the Philippines, HKU. Now this uh, is a specific topic, uh, defense, and mm. how Australia supports the Philippines in this realm. Um, Australia and the Philippines have had a very strong defense partnership. How has this evolved in the context of China's increasing aggressions in the West Philippine Sea? Uh, you're quite right. Our defense cooperation relationship is long-standing, uh, frankly, since World War II, when Australians fought side by side with the Filipinos to help with liberation of the Philippines. Since then, uh, our defense cooperation has initially been really focused around counterterrorism, and it continues to be so. And in fact, Australian government still allocate a lot of resources and a lot of effort to ensure that the situation in Mindanao remains, including with economic growth for Mindanao. So those things are continuing. But I think it's also fair to say in recent times, our cooperation around maritime security has increased. And we are working more and more together to ensure we achieve interoperability, to, to ensure that we train together, and to ensure that Australian government is helping the Philippines to really increase its capability. Um, the we defense, just want peace and stability in the absolutely. region. Absolutely. Yeah. And all of this is to ensure that we can actually prevent conflict. Uh, you're right, Mikey. I think it's really important that all of us work closely together to prevent conflict, to avoid any miscalculation, because it's in all our interests. And um, you know, you probably already know that defence ministers have met in Canberra. This was part of our strategic partnership mm -hmm. that given the importance of our relationship, that our defence ministers should meet. Uh, and this was the inaugural okay. defence ministers meeting in Canberra. Okay. And during that conversation, both Secretary Teodoro and Minister Miles made it very clear that our defence cooperation will only further deepen. Okay, on that time. note, Ambassador yes. HK, mm. as a high-ranking uh, diplomat, how mm. do you view the Philippines' current strategy in addressing China's uh, aggressive actions in the, in the West Philippine Sea? I think the Philippine government is doing an excellent job. And we fully support the Philippines uh, in their strategy. And I think you know, we are working really, really well together to ensure that collectively we're standing up for the rules-based order, to ensure that the rule of law guides how the region uh, you know, runs itself. 
Uh, and so, yes, I mean, my view is that the Philippines is doing, you know, it's in a very challenging position, but it's doing a, a fantastic job. Okay. Um, how do you think the Philippines can effectively leverage on its alliances, particularly with the United States and Australia, to counteract China's aggression in the waters? I think this issue of the rules-based order is one for all. You know, it's not just about uh, the Philippines or just about the US or just about Australia. Uh, yes, the Philippines is already working very well with its uh, ally, the US, and it's working very well with its strategic partners like Australia and Japan. Uh, but what it's been doing recently is also forming partnership with other countries uh, all around the world, not just within the region, but even in Europe, for example. And I think that's really important. And uh, I commend the Philippine government for its uh, you know, fantastic uh, strategy and engagement with the rest of the world on this very mm -hmm. important issue. As a subset of the 4 billion pesos that mm. Australia annually sends to the Philippines, Australia is increasing its civil maritime investment in the country to 656 million pesos. What are the initiatives that are going to be funded by this? Uh, we've already been, we already had phase one, and so we can certainly tell you about the kind of things we're doing under that initiative. Uh, one thing we've done under that initiative is actually run law of the sea courses for the Philippine officials. Uh, we've actually trained more than 600 personnel from 28 agencies across the government. And it's been so popular that we've also developed master's courses, we call them, where we actually get top decision makers from across the agencies together to talk about um, how the law of the sea can apply mm -hmm. to hypothetical cases. And uh, so we will continue to carry out these very important courses that's been extremely popular and very useful, I believe, to the Philippines. In addition, we've been providing really useful equipment at request from the PCG, um, things like uh, radio system, you know, radio equipment, uh, desalination uh, equipment to really help with their capacity okay. and uh, we will continue to explore how we can actually assist the Philippines where they really, really need it. Okay, last two questions, if you can answer in a nutshell, different topics. Um, the Philippines is Australia's 20th top trading partner. Mm. What can we do to get into the top 10? Well, Australia's strategy says we need to raise awareness uh, of the opportunities that are available in both our countries. We need to remove blockers, if there are any, in terms of regulation and other things. And we need to actually help the Philippines build a capacity around how to grow more by working with you. And so on that, we've got a special development program that we are working on at the moment to do exactly that. And finally, we need to make sure that investments actually happen. So to that extent, Australian government is assisting the Australian businesses to identify identify appropriate investment opportunities in the Philippines to make it happen. And the Australian government has even announced a $2 billion financing facility just for Southeast Asia okay. to help the business. All right. Okay. One last super quick question, uh, much lighter note. What is your top food in the Philippines that you think has the potential to go mainstream in Australia? That's an easy one. Chicken adobo. My <laughs> absolute favorite. I know they come in different meats, but chicken adobo is my favorite. And I think it's got beautiful flavors that will be appealing to everyone across the, across the world, really. All right. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us, Ambassador HK. Thank you. Thank you, Mikey. And that's it for today's show. I'm Mike Oreta. Catch the Billionario News Channel on free TV channel 31 and on cable via Signal Channel 24. Thank you for watching the Billionario News Channel, always on top.